You know, I'm really believing for today. I've um, spent quite a bit of time with God over the message today and uh, I'm a bit excited. I've been pastoring for almost 50 years and uh, one of the things that I've seen again and again and again that is one of the most troublesome thing to see amongst Christians is Christians who are not able to receive what God has for them. We look at scripture, we can find out so many things that he's given us. Not that he will give us if we're good or that we can earn, but that he has given us. And yet the fact is that lots of us, and I think all of us in some ways, haven't quite got to, re to figure out how to receive everything that God has for us. So really that's what I want to share about, about receiving. A number of years ago, my wife and I took on, after our family had had uh, grown up and left home. You're not here to empty that, are you? And, <laughs> and <laughs> we took on some, some foster girls who became part of our family and are still part of our family. Three beautiful girls from Samoa. And they'd been in 11 different placements. They'd been severely hurt and abused. They'd been sexually abused, emotionally abused, physically abused. They'd been through the ringer. And uh, I was working for juvenile justice in New South Wales and, and we d agreed to take these girls on the condition that it would be permanent and that they would stay together. And I remember the first Christmas because we got excited, Sue and I, and we bought them lots of presents. We thought, we'll show these girls how much we love them. How much we care for them. And I remember Christmas morning having the presents there for them and this was going to be a big deal, you know. This was going to be life-changing for them. They couldn't open them. They took them to their rooms, still wrapped. They put them somewhere in their room and still many weeks later, they weren't opened. They hadn't even got to see what they'd been given. And I can understand it now. The amount of hurt they'd been through, the amount of abuse. They'd lost the ability to trust. They'd lost the ability to, to just simply receive something that was offered to them. Now, that's an extreme example. But in lots of ways, lots of us are still not able to receive what God's already given us. Think about it. All of the promises of God are yes and amen to us. And yet some of us are still struggling and striving to try and move God's hand or do something, thinking we've got to earn something, thinking we've got to be better, give more, do more, whatever. Whatever the case, we're not all just living in those promises. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. Yet I constantly find Christians who say, I don't hear anything from God. I can't hear anything from God. I've never heard anything from God. Here's the good news. If you're a Christian, you've heard from him at least once. Or you wouldn't have gotten saved. That's true. But there are so many things like that, you know. Living in forgiveness, knowing that it's okay. You're forgiven. Sometimes I've met people who've been Christians for 
40, 50 years and they're still struggling with things that they've done somewhere in the past and carrying guilt for it and, and not ever really believing that Jesus has done for them what he said he'd do for them. That he'd carry their sin, that he'd give them forgiveness. They've never really been able to receive that. And every time you, you talk about something, it's just the same, oh, but I'm not worthy or I've done this. Or... Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yes. Jesus said, I leave you my peace. It's got nothing to do with the world. It's not like the world. It doesn't matter whether the circumstances are good or bad. My peace, I leave with you. Now, if he left it with us, it's here for us. Yes. But the fact is lots of Christians are living without peace living in anxiety and stress and distress when clearly scripture says Jesus has given it to us. And there's lots of other things. Jesus said, my father will look after you like you won't believe. He said, the lilies in the field, they, they don't struggle or strive. They don't get themselves all keyed up about things. They don't toil. Yet they're prettier to look at than Solomon in all his glory. My father knows your need, every one of them, before you even know them. And yet many of us have not been able to receive the security that God's given us. And we're still worried. Do I have enough money? Do I own a house? Do I this? Do I do, do, I do that? You know, I'm not having a go at anybody. I'm just saying, here's the truth, you know. There are Christians sitting in bombed out shelters today in Gaza, who have more peace than some Christians in Australia living in a double-storied mansion with the, the money in the bank and all of that stuff. Why? Because if we don't get our security from God himself, the situations and circumstances of our lives will just have us on a roller coaster, up and down all over the place. So I want to share about receiving. How's it for you? I'm believing that today people are going to be set free from blockages that have stopped us receiving what God has already given us. I'm believing that some people here who've been stuck are going to get unstuck. I'm believing that some people who've given up on some things and thought it's just too hard. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done this, I've done that and I don't get that peace or I don't receive what God's given to me are going to be set free. Wouldn't that be good? Will you believe that with me? Yes. How about we agree about that? Today is going to be breakthrough. Today things are going to happen. Today lives are going to change as we receive what God has already given us. Not asking him to do any more, but to receive what he's already given us. My prayer is that I sh as I share, for some of you who've lost faith, that God really loves you and cares for you and he'll meet your need, that that faith will just kind of bubble back up again. Just start to rise up. Just come up again inside you. And that this place will be filled with faith. We're going to stop and pray for that right now. Father, I pray for every person in this room today. You know us. You know every thought before. Before we think it, you know our emotions, you know our hurts, you know the stuff that's happened, the good stuff, the bad stuff, you know it all. I pray that today there would be release from blockages, insights that can only come from your Holy Spirit. 
that there'd be change and that there'd be a new capacity to receive what you have already given us, that we might walk in the light of your presence. I pray for families and relationships, for physical needs, for emotional needs, for mental needs, for relational needs, that this place might become a place of powerful, genuine healing and blessing. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping before I give you what is, I believe, five keys that'll help you. But first, let's just clear up a couple of things. One is this. I think often we haven't got the right understanding of what receiving is. The world's understanding is based on rights. I have a right for this. Do we hear much of that around today? It's my right. Um, how come they've got it and I haven't? There's a strident kind of a, an attitude and an atmosphere of I'm going to claim my rights. I'm going to demand what's due to me. I'm going to, to do whatever I have and whatever I can to get what I need. I don't want to press this, but some of that spirit's come into the church. And there's a lot of people demanding things of God. And that's not a nice way to speak to the one who's already given us everything we need. There's a lot of people jumping up and down, <clears throat> claiming and believing this. That's not what receiving is. It's not how it works. Receiving is welcoming with thanksgiving, like receiving a guest, receiving somebody at your home, receiving or just being receptive and open and listening. It's a spiritual thing. You see, if we follow the spirit of the world, it's very difficult to access the things of the kingdom of God. We trip up and we get confused and we can end up having a, a completely different spirit about us than the one that comes from God. Being able to unwrap and use and retain a gift. You ever wondered why some people seem to be able to access something from God? Could be a healing, could be anything but they don't seem to be able to retain it because we haven't really understood how to receive, how to take in, how to make it part of us and just live in that. The Bible says there's a grace in giving and receiving. Grace is really just... God's power instead of our power. That's what it means. Grace is God's power for us to change. Grace is God's power for us to grow. Grace is God's power for us to live. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. There's nothing we can do that makes us worthy of it. But it's here for us. So I want to look at three scriptures firstly. How important is this business of receiving? There's a whole lot more scriptures we could look at, but I just simply want to look at, at three. The first is John 1, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. John chapter 1. 
9 to 12. This is talking about Jesus coming into the world, a light that's come into the world, that's more powerful than the darkness, that changes everything. And it says this, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And although the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. This is an incredibly powerful scripture. It says, if we receive Christ, if we are able to, to receive him, not the stories about him, not the doctrines about him, not just the theories about him, but to receive the person of Jesus Christ into our lives, that we receive power to become something that we never could have become in any other way to become the sons of God. So this power is given to us as a seed. It's in seed form. When we receive Christ, we don't just simply, oh, oh, hi, here I am, son of God, got all that sorted out. Everything's marvellous. We, be, we receive the power to become. We receive the ability to rise over the things that challenge us. We receive the capacity to be able to change the things that need to be changed. We receive the ability to become the children of God. Isn't that phenomenal? What's the key? Receiving Jesus. It's not just coming to the front of a meeting and praying a prayer. There are a lot of people who've done that who never received Jesus. It's not just a matter of the words that we say. But if we open our heart and our life to Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, very God of very God, we receive power. Whether we feel like it or not is irrelevant. Whether our emotions tell us, oh, gee, I'm feeling powerful or not, doesn't matter. That's the truth. The second scripture is from Romans chapter 5. And these are just examples, remember, because there are many, many more that we could have used. Romans chapter 5 and from... This is talking about the gift, how... Death came to the whole world through Adam. But what Jesus gives us is a gift. He gives it to us. We don't earn it. It's much more powerful than what happened through people's sin, losing what the creation had given us. This is the gift of God through Jesus appearing. And Paul's trying to help the Romans to see that this is a gift, it's not a religious thing. It's not something to struggle and strive for. It's not something that you, you hope to get one day. Again, a really powerful verse. Verse 17, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. That's a powerful scripture. It says the people who are going to succeed in life, reign in life, that's all it means. It means not to be controlled by the circumstances and the situations, but be able to live well no matter what's happening in life, are people who've simply received a gift. It's not the people who've tried the hardest. It's not the people who are the nicest, the kindest, the most devout. It's those who've received a gift. 
What's the gift? The gift of grace, the gift of righteousness. Oh, come on, righteousness isn't, can't be a gift, can it? I mean, I've got to be right before God. Friend, I don't know how long you expect to live, but you could live for 10,000 years and under your own steam, you would not be right before God. <laughs> we can't do it. If we could do it, Jesus would not have had to die on that cross. It's a gift which we either receive or go without. We're starting to, to agree together that receiving is kind of important. Receiving Jesus, receiving grace, receiving righteousness, receiving forgiveness. In Matthew 10, Jesus is saying to his disciples, freely you have received. You've received freely. There were no holds on what I've given you. There were no ifs, buts, maybes. It wasn't a contract with fine print. It wasn't a warranty that had a, something in it that, you know, whatever you bought is going to blow up the day after the warranty's finished. It was a, a gift. And he said, because you've received freely, now you've got everything you need. Is that what he says? No. Wrong. <laughs> Go to the back of the class. Wrong. No elephant stamp for you. No, he says, freely you've received, so freely give. There's a great key in that. If you want to hold on to the things that God gives you, don't hold on to them. Let them flow through you. Just let them flow. And, oh, but, but well, I just got this, so I want to hang on to it. If you want to hang on to it, let it flow. There's a principle in Scripture of the open hand. But as long as my hand is open and I'm, I'm giving and I'm serving and, and things are flowing through me, I'll always have something in my hand. I don't know if you've experienced this in your life, but in my life I have. When I try to hang on to something and say, this is mine, this is important, I'm going to hang on to this, I'm going to protect this, the next time I look, it's gone off it ain't what it used to be receiving is very very important getting towards the keys still with me who's anxious to hear about the keys good because keys unlock things and that's a good thing to do isn't it i want to run through really quickly some blockages and i don't want to spend time on this because we could spend weeks just like with our girls, their blockage was the hurts that had taken up residence in them. That's why they couldn't receive. There are many, many different kinds of blockages. Things that cause us to get stuck. Trying to earn what God is trying to give you is the worst blockage of all. Why? Because it brings pride up in you. And God resists pride. My mum wasn't good at this. She was a Christian, but she was brought up in a, an age which said, you have to be self-sufficient and look after yourself and, and, and get everything sorted out for yourself and, and, and help the poor people who can't do that. And she was very good at helping people. She would go to people's houses and help them and cook food and clean up and do all sorts of things. He'd give money. She was a real giver. It was a terrible shock to her one day when her dear friend, her name was Beatty Barham, came up to my mum and said, Lal, you're one of the selfish, most selfish people I've ever met in my life. And my mother was horrified. But spending all my time giving. And Beatty said, yes, and you won't let me give anything to you. You won't let anybody give anything to you. You won't let anybody bless you. And that's selfish because you're stopping us from being who we need to be as well. And religion can often bring that kind of thinking in, you know. It's all about me just being good, giving, struggling, striving. We've got to be able to receive. 
we have to be able to flow. If ever we get worldly thinking into us, you know, people get what they deserve. How, much, how many times do you hear that, you know? people? It's come into modern language, you know. Oh, come, it'll come and get you. <laughs> what goes round comes round. What a load of nonsense. God does not deal with you as you deserve. He deals with you in grace. He deals with you far better than you deserve. He doesn't play an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth game with us. He is absolutely in love with you and committed to giving you more than you can imagine. Jesus said to a scared little bunch of disciples, he said, it's my father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It makes him happy to give you his kingdom. To say, here it is. He doesn't give us a deposit and say, now earn the rest. He doesn't put us on a time payment plan. He gives us. So receiving is incredibly important. In Romans 11, it talks about why Israel didn't receive what they sought so earnestly because they didn't understand what grace was. And the writer says to us the same thing He's in that passage in, in Romans 11. He says, there is now a remnant called by grace. If it wasn't just by grace, then grace wouldn't be what it is anymore. If you'd done anything to earn this, if you'd done anything to deserve this, if there was something about you that's special, it wouldn't be grace anymore. Receive it. Receive the gift. There are other things that stop us from receiving. And I would do an injustice if I didn't just briefly say something about them. Continual sin will muck you up. It'll cause you to lose your way, stop receiving what God has for you. It won't be the judgment of God on you because Jesus Christ has carried the judgment of the world until the final judgment. God's not judging anybody. He's not breaking your children's legs to help them repent. He's not causing car accidents. He's not sending sickness on you to put you through a trial. He's not. He is not. He's a good, good father. And all good things come from God above. But continual sin, you see, sin brings its own reward. It doesn't need the judgment of God and it doesn't even need the devil. Why? Because sin means I've turned away from God and I am doing what I want to do and I'm separating myself from his ways. And that will, I was going to say stuff you up, but that's probably not a good thing to say in church, but it will. It'll muck you up greatly. And you cannot avoid it. If you remain in actions and in states of sin for long periods of time, it is impossible to not bear the consequences of that. In your life so that's a kind of a warning you know it's not a, a condemnation it's just saying hey we've got to be in that place where when we sin we get up again we do what the Bible says any of us sin what do we what do we do it says confess your sin one to another not to everybody don't blurt it all out one to another that's one 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 and another is another one so one goes to one who you trust and you speak it out and you say, hey, let's pray together. And you pray together and it says the prayer of a righteous man or woman, a righteous person is powerful and changes things. Yeah. So we know what to do when we sin. We know what to do when we get stuck in habits and things that are, that are wrong. 
that are hurting us, we go one to one. Isn't that good? Doesn't have to be a priest, doesn't have to be David with a back to front collar. <laughs> Just a brother or a sister and get it out and get it sorted. Amen? Okay. You can't get away from the destructive power of sin. You have to stop it. And if you keep falling into it, well, you keep getting up. How many times do you get up? Well, it's like if you stick your head in a bucket of water 73 times, you pull it out 74 times. You just become unstoppable. I don't care. I'm going through. I'm not stopping. I'm not going to get stuck on any of this. I'm not going to say, oh, I failed. You were a failure at the start. And if you'd, <laughs> if you'd succeeded after 10 times, you would still be a failure because you'd be full of pride. Oh, I got all that sorted. Isn't it true? Okay. Let's have a look at a couple of keys. We ready? Here's the first one, and this is really, really important. We receive in personal relationship with Jesus. That's the thing that puts us in the flow. It becomes a natural growth for us when we hang around God. When we isolate, when we go away on our own, when we go inside our own heads, when we, we, we sort of just are not standing in the flow of the presence of God, we lose the capacity to receive. So we receive in natural relationship. If you get, and that's what the Bible says, you're going to press in. And it's not pressing, oh God, I've got to press. It just means, ah, here I am, you know. Show up. Be there. Don't be the one who disappears out the back somewhere. Present yourself. Remember that in school? Present, Earl, present, you know. Present yourself. Just keep turning up before God and you will find that you cannot stop yourself from growing. In that personal relationship, he will take you, you know, from being a bond slave to being a willing slave to being something else to the place where he dares to call you brother. Come on. And in that place, your heart will melt and you'll see his and you will find that something flows into you that you can't stop. It just flows into you because you are in the presence of your heavenly lover. God is love and he who lives in love lives with God and God lives with him. Perfect love casts out all fear. The person who fears is not convinced that God really loves him. It's true. So that's the first key. Second Peter, verse 1 Verse 3 says this, we have received everything. Say everything. everything. We have received everything we need through our knowledge of him. Now, that's a pretty simple statement. It's just a little statement, but man alive, there's some power in that, isn't there? It's not, if you're good, after 30 years of struggling and striving, you will receive something from God. It's not anything like that. It says we have received everything we need through our knowledge of him. It's folly to go out looking for God to give you more when he's given you everything. You need to just simply be in his presence and say, you've given me everything I need and I receive it. That's the first key. It comes through a personal relationship with Jesus. And that's not praying a prayer only, but it can be that. It's walking daily in his presence. It's walking in step with the spirit, in relationship with him, flowing with him. Oh, I'm already over time. Seriously, why did I get this watch? <laughs> Would you give me five minutes? I'll go very quickly now. Second is ask. 
Key is ask. No bargaining, no manipulation. Just ask Father God. You don't have to twist his arm. You don't have to prove anything. Just say, God, I need this. Simply ask him. You don't have because you don't ask often. We talk about our problem. We talk, tell people about our problems, we, the things we're stuck in. We do all sorts of stuff apart from just saying, I need this. Ask. That's the second one. Third, celebrate and appreciate and apply and even be prepared to give away what give, God gives you. Why? Because that keeps you in the flow. We've looked at that already. Four, get rid of religious thinking and religious believing. Keep it simple. If, you're, if you let religion into you, you'll be double-minded and a double-minded man gets nothing. Why? Because oh, I want this. No, I don't want that. Well, this is how it works. No, it doesn't. It works like that. Oh, this is a gift. No, it's not. I've not been serious enough. <laughs> you know the trouble with trying to earn stuff from God? When is enough enough? When have you given enough, prayed enough, tithed enough, served enough, sung in the choir enough, opened enough doors, swept enough floors to earn what God... There is no point at which it's enough. So you may as well accept the gift right up front. Here I am, undeserving me, and I'm relishing in the gift. I just want to say this one, though. This is important. I'll let the rest go away. You've got to abide in the vine, not just on your own. You find your gift and your place in the body because that's where real healing happens. In 50 years, I've never seen a Christian who is not involved with other Christians in some way in the body of Christ, who's not growing in a community of faith, who has been able to access the things that God has given. It's that simple. Why? Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom. It's not just us as individuals. It's not just me on my own, Lone Ranger Christian. Even Tonto's left me. You know, it's just me. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm pressing in. They've all fallen away. And there's not a church worthy of me. I can't go there. They're full of sinners. Oh, I don't like the way they sing. I don't like the way they do this. I don't like that pastor. He didn't shake my hand when I went in. I can't go to church, but I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I watch the telly because I can always switch the station really easily and just go to some other. God channel's got many of them. I'll be right. We need to be part of the body. We need to see Jesus in each other. We need to look into each other's eyes and pass the imperfections and the hurts and all of the problems that all of us have got. We've got to dare to see Jesus in each other, in ourselves. And what happens is that when we are together in the body of Christ, we grow together. Ephesians 4, 7 says, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So he's given us the grace, the power, the ability. He's decided who gets what, what sort of gifts and how it works. You can fast till you're blue in the face, but you will not get a gift that's meant for someone else. Is that true? Yes. But listen to this. From him, in verse 16 of Ephesians 4, from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. The body does it. The body does it. If you're part of the body, you will grow. You can't help it. If you're genuinely part of a body of Christ, you will grow. Now, you can turn up and sit in your seat and stay, you know, I'm not talking to anybody, I'm not doing anything and stay. And you can be as alone in the middle of a crowd as you can at home. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if you just open yourself, dare to open yourself to other people, let the flow of what God's doing touch you as well as them, you can't help but grow. It'll be effortless. Without striving, without struggling, you will just be carried along with the fact that the body builds itself up. Does any of this mean anything? Yes. Let's stand together. I just got to get sin out of the road first, you know. 
Father, I confess I went overboard too long. Forgive me. Amen. Now I'm standing back in grace, free and forgiven. Let's be serious for just a moment. If you've blocked in some area, I want you to just ask God. God, I don't want to be stuck. I want to be able to receive what I know, because Scripture says that you've already given me. If it's peace, I want peace. If it's freedom, I want freedom. If it's forgiveness, I need to live in that. If it's a sound mind, I need to, to know what that means. For he has not given us anything other but a sound mind. Holy Spirit, just in this moment, I pray you'd speak personally to every man, woman, young person, boy and girl here that you'd begin to open us up in this meeting and that you'd continue throughout the day, throughout the night and in the days ahead. Because we want to be able to be in a place where we say, Jesus, what you did on the cross was enough. We're free. We're not struggling and striving to, to earn or to get or to prove anything. Touch each life, Lord. Now, just become a sponge for the anointing. Let the anointing touch you now. Don't worry about the person up the row or somebody else or, gee, this is a good message for that one or this one. You. It's you. It's you. Start from the place of honesty. I need help, Lord, to receive what you want to give me. Breathe it in. It's that simple. Word of faith is near you. It's in your mouth. Just speak it out. Just to him, not to anybody else. Unblock me, Lord. If you know what particular things are you need, just tell him. Do business with God just for a moment. Just for a moment. There's as much Holy Spirit in this room right now as there is in heaven itself. Nothing's beyond the ability and capacity of God. He doesn't want you to stay stuck. He doesn't want you to miss out. <laughs> it's his pleasure to give you all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God is putting seeds inside people's hearts and spirits. Just water it. Let it grow. Over the coming days and weeks, and you'll see the harvest. You can rebuke the devourer. You can just avoid the same trap that you've fallen into 378 times through the grace of God. I pray right now for this people, Lord, in your name. I speak light and life, health, grace, peacefulness, forgiveness, healing. In the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, I bless you with the blessing of heaven. Receive. 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 Amen.